Next up on the Cosmic News Network, First Contact with Joshua Foote. Welcome to First Contact Radio. How are you doing today? It is Wednesday, the 18th of May, 2016, on the Gregorian calendar, right here. The sun sign is in Taurus. Our moon sign is in Libra, just like yesterday. However, that only lasts for just a little bit longer yet because we've been in Libra the last day, two days. We're about to make a transition into the next sign, which will be Scorpio. However, we have a whole day of void, of course. So the last aspect within Libra is going to be taking place at 1023 a.m. when it goes into opposition with Uranus. Let's take a look at it over here. And our moon sign right over here. And opposite Uranus. Uranus is in Aries. Okay, Aries is the ram. Aries is the beginning. Uh, leadership, fire energy, tarot card of the emperor. And over here we have the moon is in Libra, balance. So we have this balancing energy opposing the energy of unexpected change within the areas of Aries. Okay, so that's at 10.23 a.m. So what we're looking for here today is just simply f finishing out. I mean, we're in, Air in Taurus. Okay, so we are hooking together the spiritual. We need to have that spiritual connected in with us. And remember, we're connecting from the inward out because what is affecting us, the world that is emanating, is emanating through us. We're moving through it. It's projecting outward from us into the world, but it's within. That's why we have to go within to bring this out. And the underlying moon sign at the moment here is Libra. So we're looking to find that balance. Use our words. Use our actions in order to create this balance in our life, countering the things that maybe were out of balance. So part of the process of getting in balance is finding things that are out of balance and then doing something the opposite. That's why this sign here is quite interesting that we're going to have an opposition because it really is a balancing act that's taking place. It's like a teeter-totter. And so we have something unexpected, unexpected changes, surprises, 10.23 a.m., and then a whole day in which we're in that void of course period of time waiting for the next moon sign which won't occur until after midnight right. moon is 90.6 percent of the way full making its way to the full moon this Saturday the 21st Jewish calendar 10 a liar Omer count day 25 Moving to day 26, daily thought for today is illness and life. The root of illness is yearning of all of life to return home. The Shekinah, the mother of all souls, has descended from her place on high to give life and to that true place where she was one with her beloved, to where she belongs to return, and with that longing she gives life. If so, at the core of life's pleasures lies a gnawing pain, an ache that says, this is not my true place, I must be higher, somewhere beyond me. But I am not here. From that anguish comes life, but from the anguish may also come illness. From our futile efforts to alleviate the pain with habits that pretend to fill that void with vanities that are not life at all. To live is to yearn, to yearn to be more, but not to be fooled. The yearning 
that itself is life. Mayan Oracle, seven tone day. We're still down on that wave spell here, or the uh, galactic activation portal period, those 10 intense days in a row. We're in the wave spell of the seed, the seventh position right here, which is the position of the dog, love and loyalty. So today is the resonant tone of attunement. The dog is the symbol and the kin are the uh, guide for today, the wind inspiration. The phrase for today is I channel in order to love inspiring loyalty. I seal the process of heart with the resonant tone of attunement. I am guided by the power of spirit. Solar wind, 493.0 kilometers per second. Planetary K index, quiet where it will remain for the next 24 hours. A super large hole right in the top of the sun here. A couple of the small ones, but this big one here is quite significant, and we will be feeling the effect of that down on Earth over the next couple of days. M-class flare possibilities dropped it back down to 1%, just like an X-class flare. Geomagnetic storm activity, mid-latitudes, it seems to be increasing, going from 25 to 35%. Upper latitudes increasing as well, 35 to 50 So energy is intensifying more likely. It's coming from this space right here. And you can see a little bit of an example of how that comes off of the sun. And finally, looking up at the sky tonight, spot Spica to the moon's right at nightfall and to its lower right at night grows late. Far to the lower left blazes Mars, shining its bright and biggest in more than a decade as it nears opposition. Mars heads up the triangle that forms with steady Saturn and twinkling Antares. Jupiter's great red spot should transit the planet's central meridian around 11.36 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. All right, and there you go. That's your cosmic weather for today. UFO News is up next. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. Today I have four or five good stories here. First story is footage shows gold light flying over Alaska. Is this a UFO splitting into three is the question. Here's our object in question. Many people have done it, looked into the sky, seen an object, and has taken a second look. Even though some archaeologists firmly believe that unidentified flying objects have been documented by early man in cave drawings, it was in World War II that the initial official investigation began. It was at the time when military vessel crews were reported seeing glowing objects. As for whether these objects are truth or myth, a person can only speculate. Ever since there have been intense interest in the subject, however, one still has yet to hear or see of any actual concrete evidence of the alien presence. Some people claim they have seen them, but there are still questions. Recently, an eerie video showed up in Alaska, another alien encounter that splits into three parts. The footage that captured by Jared A., a YouTube user, shows an orb-like object floating in the sky. As it blinks, he focuses his camera and was shocked. Afterward, the orb splits into two and then sends another golden light hovering through the sky. The orb once again breaks for a few moments later, but instead of two, it splits into three with the two lights going down to the ground. The witness claims an excitement of the incredible sight. Among enthusiasts on YouTube, the footage has provided count, countless, provoked countless of excitements. Since the footage is clearer compared to others, people appreciated it. But it appears that people should not worry too much. Okay, so interesting. Okay, it's a four minute and forty five second video. It's a nice good capture there. And as we're looking at it, it should be splitting at some point in time here. And jump ahead, see if we can catch it. All right. All 
All right, there you go. Video is available, firstcontactradio.com. Here we have a crop circle. We had one the other day. Here's another one. This was found outside the Netherlands on May 7th. Okay. What do we think that is right there? Very interesting looking uh, object. Is this maybe Niburu with these extensions off of it like we see or is this something else? This is what it looks like when you draw the graph. Very interesting. If anybody has any ideas of what this is, send me an email. Let me know what you think about this. And of course, we see the typical signs of a crop circle, everything folded over. All right, moving on from there, Stanton Friedman says MUFON is taking money to keep 140 cases quiet. This is an interesting case at 2.13 into the video. Lion's Ground of YouTube is talking about how Stanton Friedman, the number one UFO researcher in the world right now, said that MUFON is taking money from Bigelow Aerospace to keep 140 UFO cases hidden from view. Now this is news to me, but over the last six years I've heard a lot of rumors that MUFON has been infiltrated by U.S. agents that hide the most significant cases from the public. This worries me when government is controlling public agencies. We do a, owe a deep thanks to Stanton Friedman and Lions Ground for bringing to this, this to the public's attention. So here's the link, Stanton Friedman, if you don't know him, that's who he is. But if you've been watching the show long enough or you've been studying UFOs long enough, you certainly know who Stanton is. Met him on a number of occasions. Very nice man, very intelligent man. And if Stanton is alleging that this is going on, I would pay attention. I would pay attention. UFO painting discovered in medieval wall. Painting, is this a depiction of alien existence? All right, what we have here is a house and something over the house. There's, you can see this uh, fiery type drawing behind it, perhaps indicating it's coming out of the clouds. UFO stands for unidentified flying object. While it refers to any object hovering in the sky, people cannot easily identify it. It traditionally refers to an alien vessel. Throughout history, UFOs have been reported to meteor sightings and comet. Many teams have set out to find conclusive evidence of alien life, since all human sightings are highly controversial. According to the experts, there was not enough data to determine its origin. From every sighting, scientists have provided numerous explanations Astronomical objects like the planets, bright stars, and the moon have been confused for extraterrestrial vessels. People commonly mistake weather balloons and airplanes for aliens. Everyday objects have been confused for aliens, including birds, kites, and clouds. The argument still rages over UFOs and have never settled. So now, do you believe in aliens? A certain tourist visiting the medieval church in Transylvania has left puzzled by the mysterious object in a 400-year-old masterpiece. Does this medieval wall painting portray a flying saucer in a Romanian church? The painting appeared during the 17th century. It's a church located in the core of the medieval citadel. This place was burnt down twice since it was built. The art adorns the 13th century monastery wall. However, manager Nikolai Tescula thinks that the strange, unidentified object could be the perspective of the artist in connection with heaven's representation. According to Tescola, the image portrays a less representative or secondary role. The church is e evangelical. He believes that Elijah's presumption to heaven can lead to a modern representation that people might think is a UFO. He added that many people believe it is, but in fact, it is an artist's vision. According to the Rome Romania Insider, the interior decoration of the church includes some other artwork to prevent this from happening. According to the witness, before the object was lost, it moved for three to four minutes. 
Okay, so there we go. There's the object again. Seems to be over this building. Or something like this. All right. Let me know what you think. The link will be available at firstcontactradio.com. And finally, here's a story of a boy who remembers his past as an extraterrestrial being. And he does provide startling details. You might know, not know it, but children remembering their past lives is nothing new. Reincarnation is no doubt a fascinating subject, even while the scientific community... Carl Sagan, American astronomer and astrobiologist, even acknowledged the fact that reincarnation deserves some serious study, stating that children sometimes report details of a previous life upon which upon checking turn out to be accurate and to which they could not have known in any other way other than reincarnation. There are some great examples, many of which have been uncovered by the University of Virginia psychiatrist Jim Tucker, who is arguably the world's leading researcher on the topic. In 2008, he published a review of cases that were suggested of reincarnation in the journal Explore. A typical reincarnation case described by Jim includes subjects reporting a past life experience. The interesting thing is that 100% of the subjects who report past life remembrance are children. The average age when they start remembering their past life is at 35 months. And their descriptions of events and experiences from their past life are often extensive and remarkably detailed. These children remember things that would be impossible to know about the person they claimed that they were. They've been taken to their families, confirmed addresses, professions, and various other details of the lives of the people that they used to be. We recently published an article of six great examples that go into more detail. Got a link to the article here. Again, these are truly astounding, and there would be no other way for these children to know these details. I personally believe that reincarnation is real, but I don't think it's the only option for what takes place after death. I believe it is one of many possible paths for the soul. I believe that some souls can reincarnate, as we've seen above, and into another life. I also believe that some can reincarnate into other planets, as beings we would consider alien. Furthermore, I believe reincarnation is just one option for a soul. Other possibilities include the option to travel to other dimensions, and experience the life there or to completely forego reincarnation and experience the life in a non-physical realm, free from a physical body. Perhaps a soul must continue to reincarnate until certain lessons are learned to move to another level. Who knows? Perhaps there is an origin from which all souls stem. So many questions, so many possibilities, and reincarnation could be one of many. Below is the video of Borska in an interview conducted by Carrie Cassidy of Project Camelot. If you went through the cases in the link above, this one is very different, as it involves a previous life on the planet Mars. This is no ordinary boy. His mother states that he began speaking at just four months and pronouncing full words shortly after. At eight months, he was speaking in sentences, and at the age of two, he could read. He became a local celebrity for being so intelligent, and when he turned three, he could name all of the planets in the solar system, how many galaxies there were, and a lot more. He knew so much more about astronomy that would be impossible for a child his age. He also remembers one of his past lives on Mars, where his incarnation apparently took place millions of years ago. In the interview, he made a number of statements such as, People from Mars traveled in many galaxies and planetary systems. There were many ships of an airplane type. They were triangular. They were ships like a drop. He said that these ships used plasma power, ion power. If they used gasoline, the fuel ran out too fast, the engines were too powerful. He also talked about teleportation, saying that the portal is the same like teleport. It slows down time and opens a kind of portal where time is speeding up fast. I can't say exactly, I don't remember. It opens on one side in a few seconds or even minutes. If the transfer is far away, it opens another area of space. Not all ships had the same principle. Ships with plasma engines were limited travel only in the solar system on high speed. The ships in each space, shape of a drop, were carrying other ships. Each race had its own technology and innovations. For example, if we had plasma and ion engines, other had energy engines. He spoke about other people from other planets, planetary cooperation and wars as well. 
He also spoke on people that still live on Mars, but who live beneath the surface and inside of the planet. According to him, they breathe CO2. The interview is very detailed, and if this interests you, you can watch the whole interview below. Information to further validate some of his claims. Wasn't long ago that NASA called for a press conference to announce a major discovery regarding the planet Mars. During the meeting, they revealed some pretty shocking information, completely changing what we once thought about the red planet that suddenly doesn't seem so red anymore. They announced that Mars actually contains rivers of flowing water, what we once believed to be an arid and rocky desert of a planet actually seasonal, not unlike our own planet Earth. Oendra Orha, a planetary scientist at Georgia Institute of Technology, made the discovery by using images from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Okay, so there you go. Very interesting story. Certainly kids do remember things. There's no doubt about that. So quite possible. That's exactly the case there. That's it. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Let me find where we're going here. Here we go. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions. But these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of Continuing on. So for today, I thought that I would explore the subject of secret societies. Secret societies. So let's just jump right into it because there's a lot here. Here is the entry from Wikipedia. We'll get things started off with this definition from here. A secret society is a club or an organization whose activities, events, and inner functioning are concealed from non-members. The society may or may not attempt to conceal its existence. The term 
usually excludes covert groups such as intelligence agencies or guerrilla agencies that hide their activities and memberships but maintain a public presence. The exact qualifications for labeling a group a secret society are disputed, but definitions generally rely on the degree to which the organization insists on secrecy and might involve the retention and transmission of secret knowledge, the denial of membership or knowledge of the group, the creation of personal bonds between members of the organization, and the use of secret rites or rituals which solidify members of the group. Anthropologically and historically, secret societies are deeply interlinked with the concept of Mannerbund, an all-male warrior band or warrior society of pre-modern cultures. The purported family tree of secret societies has been proposed, though it may not be com comprehensive. Alan Axelrod, author of International Encyclopedia of Secret Societies and Fraternal Orders, defines a secret society as an organization that is exclusive, claims to own special secrets, shows a strong inclination to favor its own. David B. Barrett, author of Secret Societies from the Ancient and Arcane to the Modern and Clandestine, uses slightly different terms to define what does and does not qualify as a secret society. He defines it as a group that possesses the following characteristics. It has carefully graded and progressed teachings. Teachings are available only to selected individuals. Teachings lead to hidden and unique truths, and truths bring personal benefits beyond the reach and even understanding of the uninitiated. Barrett goes on to say that a further characteristic common to most of them is the practice of rituals which non-members are not permitted to observe or even to know the existence of. Barrett's definition would rule out many organizations called secret societies. Rated teaching is usually not part of the American College fraternities of the Carbonari or the 19th century know-nothings. Because, because some secret societies have political aims, they are illegal in several countries. Poland, for example, has included a ban on secret parties and political organizations in constitution. Because the targeting of revolutionary activists, some groups have formed secrets and anonymous societies to take leadership while minimizing the risk of harassment. An example would be the Bahraini February 14th Youth Coalition. And many secret societies established on a university campus in the United States have been considered secret societies. Perhaps one of the most famous is the Society Skull and Bones at Yale University. The influence of undergraduate secret studies at colleges such as Harvard, Dartmouth, University of Virginia, New York University, and Wesley College has been publicly acknowledged if anonymously and circumspectly since the 19th century. British universities do have a long history of secret societies or quasi-secret societies, such as the Pitt Club at Cambridge University, Bulldogging, uh, Bullingdon Club at Oxford, and the 16 Club at St. David's College. One of the best-known British secret societies is the Cambridge Apostles, founded as an essay and debating society in 1820, Notable examples in Canada include Episcopan at the University of Toronto's Trinity College and the Society of Thoth at the University of British Columbia. Secret societies are disallowed in a few colleges. The Virginia Military Institute has a rule that no cadet may join a secret society, and secret societies may have, have been banned at Oberlin College from 1847 to the present and at Princeton University since the beginning of the 20th century. While their existence has been speculated for years, internet-based secret societies first became known to the public in 2012 when the secret society known as Kakeda 3301 began recruiting from the public via internet-based puzzles. The goal of the society remain unknown, but it's believed that they are involved in crypto photography and cryptocurrency. All right, so there's a little bit of brief about it. A secret society is teaching some information that is not normally available to the public. Secret societies and groups of these nature usually have and start off in the initiation ritual. Initiation ritual is where you basically teach somebody the language of your society, the basic language. You're initiated into the meaning. So for example, let me just give an example, you know, 
it, symbols, images, ideas can all be translated through pictures. The tarot cards are nothing more than a set of pictures. That's all they are, just pictures. No different than if you saw a stop sign. You know what the meaning of the stop sign is because you've been initiated and learned what that means. But that's something public for everybody to know. When you get into the secret societies, they have images that are full of all kind of symbolism, from colors to the different shape to the images and so on. As you become initiated within these secret societies, you learn what these different images are. You learn what they represent. You learn different gestures, maybe hand signals or other type of gestures that are associated with your particular group. And that way, in the initiation process, you kind of are have some secret knowledge that others don't have. And then, of course, with these different groups, as it talked about the gradings, there's different groups that move up. Like we hear the Masons, they have 33 degrees. And as you move up into each level, there's something that you would learn a little bit different than the level before, which is why there's a designation of a higher level. So this is what goes on. It's been going on for a while, these secret societies. Some of the societies have real purpose in wanting to help humanity, some not so much. Here's a list. It says secret societies are typically groups whose rituals and activities are hidden away from non-members. Since the time of the Crusades, hundreds of secret societies have been formed from different parts of the world to serve diverse political, social, and religious purposes. Here's a list of the 25 biggest secret societies to ever exist as well as a glimpse of the conspiracy theories associated with them. While some of them are believed to be fictitious or have already been dissolved, traces of their existence or their legend remains apparent even until today. All right, first we have the Order of the Hiberians. The ancient Order of the Hiberians was organized in 1890. It's a fraternal circle of Irish Roman Catholics who uphold the values of friendship, charity, and oneness among its members. The organization has historically been primarily devoted to protecting Catholic churches from anti-Catholic forces and assisting Irish Catholic immigrants to get to America, especially those who face discrimination or harsh coal mining working conditions. 24. National Grange Oliver Hudson Kelly organized the National Grange in 1867 following an order given to him by President Andrew Johnson to visit the southern United States and identify the war-ravaged areas that needed re rehabilitation. In response to the order, he proposed the formation of a secret society that would promote the advancement of rural life. Today, the secret society uses the Masonic fraternity as its model, but accommodates both men and women. The Ancient Order of Druids. The Ancient Order of Druids, AOD, is a fraternal organization founded in London, England in 1781. It still operates to this day. It is the earliest known English group to be founded based upon iconograph iconography of the ancient Druids, who were priest like figures in the Iron Age Celtic paganism. United Order of the Golden Cross. In 1876, Dr. J.H. Morgan organized the United Order of the Golden Cross to provide a means through which members can have a safe and economical method to getting life insurance policies. Though it originated in England, the strength of the secret society lies in its New York chapter. Its members today are men and women from Indiana, Columbia, Tennessee, Kentucky, who pledge to abstain from taking alcoholic drinks. The Golden Cross is among the very few secret societies that treat men and women equally. The Mystic Order of Veiled Prophets and Enchanted Realm A Freemason organization more commonly known as M-O-V-P-E-R, or the Grotto, was originally created and to add in greater measure to the Masonic fraternal spirit the charm of radiant cheerfulness and to maintain within the fraternity the impetus of royal good fellowship. One of their most notable accomplishments is the resolution to establish a 501c3 national charitable program named the Humanitarian Foundation whose first project was to aid the cerebral palsy child. 
Since its inception, over $1 million has been contributed to research of cerebral palsy. Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Also known as the Golden Dawn, Dawn is a ma magical order active in Great Britain during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, which practice theurgy, spiritual development. It has been one of the largest single influences on the 20th century Western occultism. Forester's Society. Forester's Friendly Society is a British friendly society which was formed in 1834 as the Ancient Order of Foresters. Although not as secret or mysterious as some of the others on the list, its nearly 70,000 strong membership deserves some mention. As far as the purpose is concerned, as with most friendly societies, it primarily seeks to provide insurance policies for its members. Illuminati Illuminati typically refers to various organizations claiming or purported to have under -substantiate, unsubstantiated links to the original and very real Bavarian Illuminati or similar secret societies and often alleged to conspire to control the world affairs by masterminding events and planning agents, government, and corporations to establish a new world order and to gain further political power and influence. Central to some of the most widely known and elaborate conspiracy theories, the Illuminati have been depicted as lurking in the shadows and pulling the strings and levers and powers of power in dozens of novels, movies, television shows, comics, video games, and music videos. The Knights of Columbus. The Knights of Columbus is the largest network of Catholic men and their families throughout the world. Founded in 1882, most of the rituals of this organization are modeled after those of the Masonic Lodge. Today it has over 11,000 councils all over the globe and boasts the insurance policies that it provides for its members. Okay. Uh -huh. Here we have the Knights of Pythias. The Knights of Pythias was just the first was the first fraternal organization to receive a charter under an act of the United States Congress. Founded by Justice Rathborn, who had been inspired by a play by the British poet John Bainham about the legend of Damon and Pythias, the member must be at least 18 years of age. He cannot be a professional gambler or involved with illegal drugs or alcohol and must have a belief in a supreme being. Okay, uh, Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan, informally known as the Klan, is the name of three distinct past and present far-right organizations in the United States, which have advocated extremist reactionary currents, which such as white supremacy, white nationalism, and anti-immigration. Historically expressed throughout through terrorism, it is classified as a hate group by the Anti-Defamation League and Southern Poverty Law Center. The Bilderberg Group, also known as the Bilderberg Club, the Bilderberg Group is a secret society composed of some of the most influential men in the world, including prime ministers, presidents, and international bankers. It is believed that the major purpose of this private club is to create an aristocracy of purpose between the United States and Europe. The organization is so private that the only its steering committee decides who should be enlisted as its members. The Loyal Order of Moose Founded in 1888 by the Scottish Dr. Wilson, the Loyal Order of Moose dedicates itself to providing health benefits to its members. The organization went through hard times in the 20th century after it lost most of its members until a man named James Davis took the reins and helped the Moose recover from, it, from its membership slump. He convinced and recruited thousands of new members and established a thriving network of Moose Lodges throughout the United States. Freemasonry, a fraternal society that was established between the 16th and 17th century. Freemasonry has over 6 million members today and remains actively engaged in the conduct of charitable works in the secluded communities of Scotland and England. Its members uphold the constitution drafted by Scottish minister James Anderson, where the establishment of fraternal friendship is central. 
PEO Sisterhood, a women's organization with about 250,000 members in the United States and Canada. PEO Sisterhood was organized on January 21, 1869 to provide opportunities for education to all female members around the world. The society has organized chapters in the United States and Canada and is known for being the second sorority to have been formed in the United States. Currently headquartered in Iowa, Canada PEO Sisterhood maintains its traditions of secrecy even after it's okay to talk about PEO campaign in the 20th century. The Improved Order of Red Men the Improved Order of Red Men was organized December 16, 1773 by some members of the Sons of Liberty to promote liberty as well as to challenge the tyranny of the monarchy of England. Throughout the course of the Revolutionary War, members of the Red Men joined the Continental Army to push for the downfall of the English crown. The rituals of its members are patterned on the rituals practiced by the Native Americans. The Ancient Arabic Order of Nobles of the Mystic Shrine, commonly known as Shriners and abbreviated as AAONMS, they were established in 1870 are an Arab pendant body to Freemasonry. In 2010, the Ancient Arabic Order of the Nobles of the Mystic Shrine, as well as the Shriners of North America, changed its name to Shriners International, now covering nearly 200 temples across North America, South America, Europe, and Southeast Asia. The organization is best known for the Shriners Hospitals, for children it administers, and the red fezes that members wear. The Modern Woodmen of America Established in 1883 by Joseph Cullen Root, Woodmen is among the largest fraternal benefit societies today with about 845,000 members worldwide. Members of this organization are called neighbors and conduct fraternal projects for various communities. Its services include the donation of equipment to police, fire and rescue units, as well as the provision of assistance to senior citizens, orphans, and disaster victims. Known today as the modern Woodmen of America, the society uses an axe, beetle, and wedge as its primary symbols. Knights of the Golden Eagle, their fraternal society, benefit society founded in Maryland. Baltimore, Maryland, 1873. At the peak of membership in 1900, the organization was active in 20 states with approximately 20,000 members. It began to decline in 1943 and 44. During World War II, some historians believe that this fraternal organization has become extinct. Ordo Tempore Ordinis. The Ordo Tempore Ordinis is the Order of the Temple of the East founded at the beginning of the 20th century as an international fraternal and religious organization dedicated to have the law of Thelma as its guiding principle. Membership in this organization is like Freemasonry where an in initiatory system followed by a series of secret ritual dramas is among the prerequisites. The purpose of the system it adopts is to strengthen fraternal ties as well as introduce its spiritual teachings. The Priory of Sion. The Priory of Sion is an umbrella society composed of multiple smaller groups that all aim to allow and convince the members to involve themselves in studies and mutual aid. Considered the most controversial secret society to ever existed in the Christian world, the Priory of Zion is said to have been founded as early as 1099 by a man named Godfrey of Bullion on Mount Zion. The Fool Society, initially named the study group for the Germanic antiquity, the Thule Society, a secret organization formed in Munich, Germany, principally created to return power to Germany after its defeat in the First World War and the fall of the Treaty of Versailles. Its name was derived from a fictitious northern country from Greek mythology, Thule. Since 1917, people who seek to become members of the secret society have been obliged to undergo a blood declaration of faith before being admitted. Sons of Liberty was a group consisting of American patriots that originated in the pre-independence North America British colonies. 
The group was formed to protect the rights of the colonists and to take to the streets against the taxes by the British government. They are best known for undertaking the Boston Tea Party in 1773, which led to the intolerable acts and a counter-mobilization of the patriots. The Rosicrucians, devoted to the pursuit of esoteric wisdom, the Rosicrucians is a secret organization founded in the 16th and 17th centuries to spread occult doctrines and occult powers. By the dawn of life, by the dawn of the 17th century, two books were published to allude to the rituals of Rosicrucians, which generally bring together elements of Egyptian Hermeticism, Gnosticism, as well as Jewish Kabbalism. It is believed that Isaac Newton was a member of the secret organization. And finally, Skull and Bones. Informally known as Bones, Skull and Bones is a secret society that evolved from a group of senior students from Yale University. The senior class of Yale founded the organization in 1832 to show its resistance to the debating societies of the university, Linonia, Brothers in Unity, and the Calopian Society. Much like the Illuminati, the society is sometimes theorized to play a critical role in global conspiracies that aim to dominate the world. Okay, so there's quite a few of them out there. Definitely quite a few of these secret societies. Now, here's an interesting article that alleges Nordic aliens were the ones who started Freemasonry. This is from the official magazine of the Scottish Rite. God's plan, the Masonic God is Lucifer, is dedicated to the unification of all races, religions, and creeds. The plan, dedicated to the new order of things, is to make all things new. A new nation, a new race, a new civilization, and a new religion. A non-sectarian religion that is already recognized and called the religion of the great light. Looking back into history, we can easily see that the guiding hand of providence has chosen the Nordic people to bring in and unfold the new, word, the new order of the world. Records clearly show that 95% of the colonists were Nordic Anglo-Saxons. Providence has chosen the Nordics because the Nordics have prepared themselves and have chosen God, just as Providence has chosen the Jewish race, the children of Israel, to bring into the world righteousness by carrying the Ten Commandments, which emphasizes, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So also Providence has chosen the Nordic race to unfold the new age of this world, a Novus Ordo Seclorum, which we see on the back of the money that we use. C. William Smith, free Masonic scholar, was alluding to the cult of Freemasonry's plan for a new nation and a new order of things in the U.S., the much lauded new Atlantis of the Dark Empire of the Secret Societies, in the official publication of International Freemasonry New Age magazine. Was Atlantis peopled by Nordic aliens? Authors of this article think so. Those who read this website and understand the true nature of Freemasonry know that the great light represents Lucifer, the new religion, they seek Luciferianism, which is exists, which in essence, the ancient gnosis of the pagan mystery religions of antiquity. Note that in the first sentence, the Masonic religion claims their god is working to race mix, destroy and combine the races of the world into one race, including the very races that allowed this great project to be implemented, Jewish and Anglo-Saxon. This doesn't make sense until we read the last sentence. Providence has chosen the Nordic race to unfold this new age to the world. It is obvious that Providence is actually Lucifer, and that the Nordic race is different from the Jewish people and the Nordic Anglo-Saxons. This Nordic race is actually an alien race. Okay. And it goes on from there. There's a lot more to this article here. I'm going to leave that for you. But it would make sense that some of these secret societies stemmed from some of these aliens, some of the extraterrestrials who have been down here on Earth because they've been here before we are. We have been, and so they would continue to have their different groups and institutions. And, you know, remember, if we think back to the various groups that have been here, there's been infighting within those groups. When we go back to the Sumerian tablets and the stories of E and Enki, we find that these two brothers were kind of battling with each other. One wanted to keep humanity enslaved. One wanted to free humanity. 
when we look at the stories within the Nag Hammadi uh, text that were discovered, we see similar writings in there that shows that there was something about what occurred in this planet that was different than what we've been told. There might be mystery schools involved in maintaining this wisdom. You know, they've been around for a long while. Now, some because they cause problems, those who are aware of them have often tried to warn us. And one of those who tried to warn us was President John F. Kennedy. Here is the text from a speech that he gave. But rather than read through this, I'm going to play a portion of one of his talks that deals particularly with this subject. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed <clears throat> to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people, for I have complete confidence and the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors, for as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, Without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solon decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, 
not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes <clears throat> even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Okay, good speech, excellent speech. Excellent speech. It is said that uh, this speech was one of the things that led to his assassination because the secret societies, well, they wanted to remain secret. They wanted, didn't want to be exposed. The same secret societies that he warned about are still operating today. You just heard a list of 25 of them, many of which are still in existence. So it seems that he was on to something, which is why he is no longer with us because somebody didn't like the fact that he was on to something. Now, with all of this secrecy, with all of this stuff going on in the world, what do we do? How do we deal with that if we're not connected with these groups? Well, we have to remember we're connected to a much larger group, a larger society, and that's the Society of God, the Great Spirit, the Divine Providence, something that is the source of all of life. And that is the purpose why we're here. And as we allow that source to flow and emanate freely through us, we then find ourselves connected to something much, much bigger than ourselves. Because all of these secret societies here, they're earthly-based secret societies. Societies of men or groups with some particular idea or agenda. Yet when you connect in with the source, you find that there's something much beyond agendas much bigger than what's going on here on the earth. One way we get there is through the process of meditation, which is why we meditate each and every day in the show, even just for a few minutes, because it's about focusing our energy to connect in with Source. It says meditation is a practice in which individual trains the mind or induces a mode of consciousness either to realize some benefit or as an end in itself. The term meditation refers to a broad variety of practices, much like the term sports that include techniques designed to promote relaxation, build inner energy, chi, ki, prana, etc., and to develop compassion, love, patience, generosity, and forgiveness. A particularly ambitious form of meditation aims at effortlessly sustained single-pointed concentration, single-pointed analysis meant to enable its practitioner to enjoy an indestructible sense of well-being while engaging in any life activity. Meditation often involves an internal effort to self-regulate the mind in some way. Meditation can help clear the mind and ease many illnesses, such as high blood pressure, depression, anxiety, to name a few. It may be done sitting or in an active way. For instance, Buddhist monks involve awareness in their day-to-day -day activities as a form of mind training. Prayer beads or other ritual objects are commonly used during meditation in order to keep track of or remind the practitioner about some aspect of the training. Meditation may involve generation, generating an emotional state for the purpose of analyzing that state, such as anger, hatred, etc., or cultivating particular mental response to various phenomena, such as compassion. The term meditation can refer to the state itself as well as to practices or techniques employed to cultivate the state. In brief, there are dozens of specific styles of meditation practice. The word meditation may carry different meanings and in different contexts. Meditation has been practiced 
since antiquity is a component of numerous religious traditions and beliefs. Meditation is about focusing. You know, I talk continuously about how everything is energy. We're beings of energy. Energy emanates through us. Life of the universe flows through us. Meditation allows us to contact that because literally what we're doing is closing our eyes and going inside. We go inside because this is where we're told that we find the truth of what we're looking for. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, was one of those who continually referenced going inside. Some of his terminology and words about this weren't always evident in the New Testament, but if we find some of the Gospels that were hidden and later found, the, the books of the Apocryphon, the books of the Nag Hammadi, or even the Dead Sea Scrolls, we do find information where he is telling us to go inside, to look at that light inside and allow that to grow. So there are ways we can deal with things. Meditation is one because there in we find our inner strength and in finding that inner strength we realize that strength is to connected to something much larger than us once we realize that we know that we're not alone in all of this that we are simply playing a part and that knowledge in and of itself oftentimes provides us with a new sense of confidence a new sense of understanding our place in this universe okay so there you have it Here's a message from Archangel Gabriel for today. Archangel Gabriel Daily Message Tilda Tuesday, May 17, 2016 by Shelley Young Dear Ones, if you have something going on in your life that you would like to evolve beyond, you do not have to have the specific answer of how to do that in order to find the healing you seek. That is what the flow is for. Surrender into the flow of your highest good and you will be led to what you need. When wellness is your intention, the universe will always guide you to the perfect matches that will help you move into the experience of more of exactly that. Tilda Archangel Gabriel Alright, that was a nice short little message there. Just teaching us that we you know, need to trust what's going on. So let's close our eyes. So we do our meditation for today. So take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another breath. Exhale again. And another breath. And exhale. And just observe your breath as you continue to breathe in and exhale out. And as you do observe your breath and this movement of in and out, we think of the waves of the ocean and how they move back and forth. We think of them as the universe inhaling and exhaling. As we think of the sun and the universe and the way in which this energy of the geomagnetics moves up and back. We think of the sun as breathing. And as we look around us and we see the energies all around us, we can see the subtle movement of all things around us. We realize that all of life is breathing because all of life is alive and so we find our place within this breath within this breathing and as we breathe in and out we understand that this is the universe breathing through us and that all we do is let go and allow it to happen we realize that is the natural process of things to breathe in and out and that if we allow ourselves to move in flow with this breath of life we find that life moves in a much smoother manner so feel this breathing 
and through this breathing feel this connection to that beyond this earthly realm to that beyond our earthly senses feel this breathing coming from source this breath of life So as we go through the world today, let's just observe this breath of life that moves through us, inspires us, moves us. But let's observe this life not only breathing through us, but breathing through all things that we experience. All things, all persons. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, Christ light that shines through us. We thank you this day and all days for the breath of life that flows and breathes through us and through all things. We appreciate the connection we have to the higher plane of existence. We are grateful to be here on earth to complete whatever purpose we have here on earth. And we honor the knowledge that we are connected to something much bigger for in that knowledge we take comfort in knowing that we are not alone and that we have purpose so let the subconscious mind continue on this journey just observing our breath observing the breath of life moving through all of existence and let's bring the conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. Well, my friends, that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. The links are available at firstcontactradio.com. You can also find us over at Facebook. Uh, Twitter messages go out about the shows. Google Plus, you know, all the usual places. If you have any questions or anything, please sure to uh, leave your comments in the comments section at YouTube or just send me an email, firstcontactradio at yahoo.com. All those ways I'll... Uh, be able to communicate back with you if you have a way for me to do so. That's it for today, my friends. Have a great day. I love you. Keep loving each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.